Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how I use the blur technique to paint the soft fluffy fur in this watercolour painting of a lima. So I hope you enjoy the video. The reference picture for this painting came from Amy Howard of Amy Howard's Art in her art challenge for this month and I'll link her Facebook page with all the info in the description box so you can go and check it out. Today I'm using Archer's 140 pound cold press paper and my Schmincke watercolour paints in pans and whilst I want to create a soft fluffy fur on my painting today I began by painting the face of this lemur a bit more traditionally using the wet in wet technique. Now this part of the video is going to be sped up a bit but I'll be slowing it right down when we get to the blurry bit so you can see better how it works. I'm also going to be talking about the pros and cons of this technique for watercolour paintings as we get further into the video, and seeing how it compares to some other ways you can use watercolour to paint fur, so make sure you watch till the end. In this painting I've again been testing out different paint mixes to make black instead of just using black from the pan, as I think the black on its own can look a bit flat. I mixed up indigo and burnt sienna for the nose and pupils of the eye and used these colours in varying proportions and concentrations for most of the darkest areas in the fur on the face. That said, I also saw shades of purple, brown and blue in the reference photo, so I wanted to add in some of these colours to my wet paint to get some nice transition and mixes on the wet paper. I also use my Winsor & Newton neutral tint for larger areas of the fur which has some nice purple undertones and went well with the other colours on my limited palette. So let's get on and talk about the blur technique. So the blur technique is achieved simply by making a soft edge to your watercolour paint using a wet brush. In my painting today I'll be experimenting with using it on paint that is still wet as you can see here and also testing it out and seeing how the effects compare to using it on watercolour paint that has dried. So firstly I'm using this technique on paint that is still wet. All I do is drag a brush with clean water along the painted edge I want to blur and the paint seeps or bleeds into that clear water creating a soft edge. The more clean water on your brush the more the paint spreads so it can be a little tricky to control but you can always use a paper towel to blot any excess water and stop the paint from bleeding out or spreading too far. Now there are a few downsides that I've discovered to using this technique whilst your paint is still wet. The first as I mentioned is that the paint moves faster and more freely into the clean water areas. And if you're painting within a defined area or outline sketch like I am on this lemur's face, it can be easy for your blurry areas to move beyond the sketch outlines as they spread outwards. To avoid or minimise this happening though, you can simply start blurring your edges inside your sketch lines rather than using it right at the edges. So the second downside to using this technique whilst your paint is still wet is that if you add too much clean water on the painted edge, you can get backwash. This is when the water from the brush seeps onto the painted areas and can cause some unwanted cauliflower effects where you have areas of paint on your paper at different stages of drying. I tried to avoid this by keeping the paper wet and working on several different areas at once. I put some paint down, softened the edges, then whilst the paper was still wet made any adjustments before moving on to the next area. I thought it was fun to have a play about and experiment a bit and I think this is a really good way of introducing a looser, more expressive element into your paintings. So now let's take a look at how the blur technique works on dried paint and how it compares with the wet method we've already tested. For this I'm going in with a damp brush on the right side of the lemur's face. And although this area did bleed out nicely when it was wet, it still dried with more of a defined edge than I wanted. And because the paint had dried, adding a wet brush to the edges to blur them gave a much less dramatic result than using it on wet paint, but it was also a lot easier to control. 
So I also added in some diluted burnt sienna to this right side to add in a bit of shadow and interest as well. I applied the same method to the left hand side by adding clean water to the dried paint. As before, my previous paint layers had dried with harsher edges than I wanted, but by simply running and gently agitating my wet brush along these dried edges, I was able to blur them out and I really liked the results. You'll notice that I switched up to using a larger flat brush for this bit which I found a lot easier to work with because I could cover larger areas more quickly and more effectively reactivate those dried edges. I found it useful to keep a piece of paper towel handy to be able to clean off extra water and paint so I wouldn't spread any lifted paint onto areas of fur that I wanted to keep light. So then after I'd added some light shading to the fur, it was time to go back in and add another layer to the lemur's face and begin work on his body. I started off with a wet and wet technique and put down a layer of clear water onto the lemur's body. I then dropped in some neutral tint, remembering not to paint right up to my sketch outline as I wanted to blur the edges and didn't want the paint to spread too far. I then continued across the rest of the lemur's body and added in some brown sienna, burnt umber and indigo to the lighter areas on the lemur's fur. And whilst I did still have a few issues balancing paint and water on my paper, I did find this looser style of painting a lot of fun, and I think using a combination of the blur technique on wet and dry paint gave the best results. I do think the lemur's fur was starting to look soft and fluffy. So compared to other methods for painting fur in watercolour, this one isn't the most precise and I don't think my lemur will win any prizes for being the neatest in town, but overall I think I set out what I wanted to achieve, which was to paint soft fluffy looking fur with my watercolour paints. This blur technique is really fun and you should definitely experiment with it if you haven't tried it. I've mentioned a few of the disadvantages, water control being the main one, but with practice comes progress. And on the plus side, this technique is fast, fun and effective, and the result, whilst often unpredictable, is something different and interesting, and it's a style I definitely want to experiment further with in the future. I left the eyes till the end today as with all that water floating around I didn't want to risk them getting washed out and I really like the contrast of the detailed eyes compared with the blurry fur but with those added I then decided to add more value and contrast to the whole piece so I went in with another layer or two to try and achieve those really dark rich colours depicted in the reference photo. I'd love to know if you've tried this blur technique before and if you like it, how do you use it in your watercolour paintings? Let me know in the comments box too if you've got any tips or tricks on getting the best out of this technique that I haven't mentioned today. Perhaps you've got a different method for painting fur. If you have, I'd love to hear about that too, so drop me a comment in the box below. There are so many different types of fur, whether it be short, long, curly, fluffy, and there are so many different ways of painting them in watercolour. If you'd like to see me try another animal or another technique for painting fur, then let me know. I really appreciate all your comments and all your support as well. So now I'm on to the final stage in this painting and I wanted to add in some colour to the whiter fur around the lemur's face. Although white at first glance, I could still see blues, browns and greys in the fur which I added in with light dilute washes. This also helped the fur to better stand out on the white paper.
So last of all in this painting I added in a mixture of indigo and French ultramarine to the area on the right hand side above the lemur's body. This was to try and tie in the colour scheme and I blurred this out to nothing using my flat brush again on the rest of the white of the paper. This painting style and technique really pushed me out of my comfort zone today but I'm really glad I pushed through as I think my lemur turned out okay in the end. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up too. I'll put a link to a couple of other videos you might like so why not go and catch up on those if you haven't seen them already. I'd like to thank you so much for watching and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and have a good week. See you soon. Bye.